Don't forget, uh, you can like us on both a Twitter and a WhatsApp. And with just a couple of days to go till the big one at the 2024 renewal of uh, the World Sport, uh, Sports Betting Net, you might just uh, want uh, to uh, bounce your ideas off our resident tipsters. That is uh, both uh, Darren Barrows and uh, Del Marie. And I'm sure they'll be quite happy to engage you, especially with the latest developments of uh, one of the likely leading contenders in the Met. Uh, bless my stars being amongst the series of intended travellers who have been uh, banned uh, from going through for Saturday's race. Anyway, let's talk about Thursday's racing. We are at uh, Turpentine on the inside track. First race off at uh, 12.25. We have a scratch in the five of Bossy Boots. Uh, rain has been uh, something that has evaded us. Uh, fortunately, in the last uh, week or so, so we shouldn't fear that. But uh, it is uh, welcoming both our uh, analyst, uh, Daryl uh, Marie, and uh, first, it is input from uh, Darren Burrows. Darren, a very good afternoon uh, to you. Hopefully, uh, Turpentine is a bit kinder to us than uh, was the case at the Vol on Tuesday. Yes, um, I think so. <laughs> uh, let's see how it goes, because I was quite confident on Tuesday, and I think two of the five bosses arrived. Um, but race one, Dow Solo. Um, she's a speedy filly. Uh, she doesn't quite find extra in the closing stages, but last time out was a much improved run after being uh, beaten at 6 to 10 previously. Um, she must have a chance. Um, a horse like Enchanting Lady was under two lengths behind Dow Solo last time out, so there's not much separating them. And then you've got Gold Agents. I think all seven runners I've actually marked with a chance. So I don't think it's a race to get involved in, but I thought one and two the horses to beat. One and two the horses are to beat for Darren Burrows. That is in the first leg of the Bipot. One and two Dal Solid stable having a couple of winners yesterday. And of course, uh, that was a day before yesterday on Tuesday. And that was uh, with uh, Tony Peter actually sticking us into the second one, which we would have overlooked uh, for a win purposes, but won well that uh, did that uh, runner in a race number two after the impressive uh, return to the track of Ormond Sea. Were you impressed by Ormond Sea? And uh, what sort of a future do you see there, Mr. Uh, Marie? Yeah, Cecil, I mean, her, her high cruising speed really has her opposition on the back foot from mm -hmm. the jump. Um, I'd love to see her go on and uh, train on and uh, be something special. I wish so for his sake yeah. and uh, for the connections I have a syndicate, they deserve a special one. But uh, come uh, race number one, he's got down solo, one of a couple that have uh, recently relocated from KZN in those silks and that is off the jetties. Part of your selection process? Absolutely, so, so I'm not convinced with the uh, Articuno or Articuno run, so I'm not going to be putting any of them in. Um, Dal Solo, you know, on debut, well, for a new yard, um, Mr. Peter said maybe she was uh, just uh, a little bit unfit for the 1160. I mean, she only came up for a close to home, and then she disappointed, but she set the record straight in her last start, and uh, that wasn't a bad effort whatsoever. Certainly strong enough to feature over here. Uh, but number two does have a chance of reversing the form because of the draw turnaround. Um, so one and two will suffice for me. I'm not looking past uh, the two of them. Yes, and indeed, uh, just uh, touching on the uh, selections there, as we look at the uh, bipod from Daryl, that is uh, going to feature one and two, and uh, both our tips are uh, in unanim unanimity that uh, one and two should see us through. And there's that uh, banker, only bank in race two, number one, a mid-winter wind. Now, just touching on that penultimate run as we uh, move on to race two, Daryl, that Coppola foam line sadly looks better than it was initially. It was about 70 to one when it won for uh, Rod Maroon, but I see... Sakales Katulo came through and won last Thursday, so there's been a winner out of that already. 12.25 is the off time to that first leg of the bipod, and it's one and two, the total outlay, 384 rand. The uh, PA starts in race number two. We've lost the uh, five bossy boots, leaves us a field of a seven. This is a maiden plate over the 1,200 metres. We're racing on uh, the inside the track. And the uh, favourite in a race in number two, that is actually 1,200 metres. And uh, the uh, favourite, odds on. And after Tuesday, you tend to not just go in blindly, but I think this one should come through and win. Of course, uh, we know at this early stage that uh, Smanga Kumalo, after his unfortunate incident in the latter part of Saturday's card, who was carded to ride a mid or winter wind, will not ride. But irrespective of the riders, certainly does come in with a form worthy of respect. And uh, a PA uh, suggestion, a BA banker perhaps? 
Uh, Pierre Banker, and if you are taking any total to comes, you can certainly add him. I mean, you're not going to get rich. But yes. uh, in my book, he's a penalty kick, sir. So. He is a penalty kick and the likely exactor. Uh, uh, swinger horses, what would you make yeah. those? Uh, Donna Mo, perhaps, uh, that run behind yeah. Sukhumvit. But the second horse, the one that was just behind Donna Mo, didn't quite uh, do the uh, form line any justice. Yeah, I mean, half a length. Um, if, she, if she was a half length better on the day, you would have said the form line's been pranked. <laughs> so, uh, no, yeah. but you thought, well, gee, this is a, one of those, uh, um, one of four or five uh, dead certs on the card. <laughs> yeah, Cecil, uh, the bookmakers aren't in the game of giving away free money. Um, it's never that easy, but... Uh, I'll be shocked if this one gets beat. I'm certainly including him in all my autocams on the day. Okay, four to ten is they can't get rich, but if you've got the uh, horses to back it up here, you should be okay. All right, let's uh, get to Mr. Darren Burrows and his thoughts as we round off our uh, preview to that first leg of the PA. It seems uh, confidence abound about uh, the uh, favourite uh, being a very, very reliable banker. Mr. Burrows, race number two, what would you say here? Um, Midwinter wind should win by five, easing up in this type of company. Last time out, he moved up to Ryan's Boulevard and he was cruising and he just didn't stay the 1450. So the drop back to 1200 from a good draw on the inside track, um, he's a bank in orbit. But I can tell you, Donna Mo, um, on her best Cape Town form, she is going to run a clear second. So if the exacta can pay three rand, I suggest putting a couple of hundred, one by nine, and I think they'll run first and second. Thank you so much. One by nine, that is uh, the uh, suggestion uh, for that uh, first leg of the PA banker from Darren, uh, Darrell, rather, in that first leg. And then there's a banker in uh, the second last uh, leg, and that is also Santa Claus, uh, number one in a race and number seven. That uh, being a pretty in pearls is certainly holding form. Uh, after that run over the 2000, we'll be coming back to a trip of 1800 meters. That is race two, and that starts at uh, one o'clock. All right, so uh, race number three is off at uh, 1200, uh, rather uh, 1335, it's over the 1200 meters. And we've got Max the Otter now has relocated to the high felt, is with the successful uh, satellite yard of uh, Brett Crawford run so ably by James Crawford. It is uh, possibly a back to back victory that meets a similar type of field, has a decent draw of a six to, to contend with. Smunger road on that day, it will be Pilisan and Claudie riding because there is another runner that I take it will be ridden by the stable elect. No, it will be Mr. Lohaba, and that is uh, simply magic. Now, as far as uh, your uh, selections are for race number three, Mr. Barrows, you've given us a win suggestion. Pray tell, what do you go for in race number three? Uh, Max the Otter for me. Um, I know that he's worse off at the weights with simply magic, but it was his first run on the high fault after a break. And I thought it was an impressive victory. If you go back in his form, uh, he was racing off at 88 uh, back in the day. And he still ran uh, third to Scalini, who's won again. Future Swing was behind him, has won, what, three or four since then. Kitchikal. Um, That's the ability that he has. So I'm hoping that he can build on that effort. He's acclimatized more. Um, I think he's the right horse in the race. And Turbo Power, he'll be staying on from a deep draw. I think he'll run into the money. One more to consider, the Blinker Strike run for cover. Um, I think he will start seeing more of him now. Okay, but it is first choice and a win suggestion from Darren Burrows for race number three, and that is the three Max the Otter, that is in the, in the colours of uh, Mr. Shirtliff's uh, Green uh, Acres uh, Trust. Word from you, Dad, Darren. I see, Daryl rather, I see the oldest jockey in the race and the only full-time jockey is uh, Pilisand and Claude. I actually thought maybe I'd overlooked the apprentice uh, aspect, but definitely not an apprentice as Pilisande. Yeah, I think this is one of those young jocks first apprentice races. Okay. I think, um, Cecil, you know, Max Darter certainly found the right race last time out. It wasn't a strong field whatsoever. Um, he only picked up a three-pound penalty. I don't think that's going to be of any concern. And he's going to strip fitter. I think he's rating so low that he is going to be competitive once again. But it wasn't a strong field. I love the way Turbo Power turned it on last time out. You know, it was his first start with the blinkers. This horse has always had ability. 
and uh, Donald gave him a lovely patient ride. Uh, I'm hoping they aren't going to change tactics from a wide draw. Give it, just give him a nice chance to settle um, off the pace. And you know, we touched on, it's an apprentice young jockeys race. They tend to go very, very quick in these races. So if they do do that, he'll certainly be finishing the best. So I think one and three to fight it out. Thank you so much. That was a winner just uh, last uh, Tuesday. That is the Turbo Power in the colours of uh, trainer Sean Terry and uh, Sean Terry Racing. That will be bidding for uh, three wins from just the seven outings. Turbo Power. But Maxi Otter, that is uh, the suggestion, as we've already confirmed uh, from uh, Darren Burrows uh, for race uh, number three. That is the win selection and uh, possibly a candidate for banker in race uh, the first day of the pick six. Okay, it'll be jackpot time when we get to race number four on the inside track of Turpentine. It is one of the higher rated races, the merit rate of 96. It's over the 1450. We've lost the one at Team Gold as well as the six of Faster Love. And that leaves us with a field of 10 runners. First of all, let's start with Daryl. Argo Ali has had that win and also fourth, not too far off them last time out. And that was at Turpentine having won at the Vol on the WSB Grand Heritage Day. As the 1450 as the distance, a draw on the number three all seems to, in its, to be in its favour. And a winning rider on that occasion is back aboard, and that is Muzi Yeni. Uh, certainly has to be included in all bets, but if you like his chances, you have to have respect for several others who finished ahead of him last night, the likes of Turpitz and Captain of Grit. So I've included all three. I'll make this close to a field event. Um, Tar Bomber without the headgear last time out, settled and ran on. He must go in. Uh, Laguna Verde, Cecil, this also has been ultra disappointing, but uh, he's more than capable on the day, and his ratings come down to an effective mark of, yeah, he's gone into my play. Um, don't know what's happening with the jockey arrangements. Is uh, Craig Zachy retained by... Um, uh, Mr. Shaw. I, well, I know he is definitely part of the uh, Lucky Wood and Larkers uh, stable, and he seems uh, to do a lot of riding for Mr. David Shaw. And is the titanium racing okay? This one is bred by the uh, Clifton Stud, but uh, certainly there seems to be a bond there and some sort, or sort of an arrangement. But he do, does know the horse as well. Clyde has actually been tipping us the Laguna Verde for quite some mm -hmm. time. But uh, you say the uh, first choice for you would be what? Out of your uh, selections, the uh, captain of Grit, uh, Aldo Ali? Saw Bomber. Saw so, Bomber. But yeah, I mean, uh, go wide of yes, yes. I'll go wide. Just to confirm, we haven't had the news of a replacement for Smanga on uh, the Candace Dawson train to number 12. And that is captain of Grit. Right, uh, we've got a jackpot that uh, will be forthcoming from uh, Mr. Uh, Burrows. On the horizon is stable companion to the three Laguna Verde. And uh, Lucky has uh, made no secret that he does uh, rate the horse uh, pretty highly. He's not a guy who really does uh, get too carried away. But on the horizon, I think is an exception. He thinks uh, he can go places with on the horizon. Are you in the same camp? Well, she is my first choice narrowly. Um, I think the drop-in trip is going to suit her. I think 14.50 ideal trip. She has got a turn of foot. Um, last time out, moved up, didn't find extra. The time before that, over 18 as well. So I think the 14.50 from a one draw, she'll be right there. Zar Bamba and uh, Arga Ali, I think they're both uh, serious runners here too. Uh, Laguna Verde, very disappointing horse. Um, you can't ignore him, but he hasn't won in a long time. Uh, Turpitz and Captain of Grits also got chances. So I would go wide in this race, but on the horizon, I wouldn't be surprised if she trotted up. All right, let's confirm exactly how wide you're going, Mr. Burrows. Two, three, four, five, seven. 10, 11, and 12 are the runners in that first leg. And there is that banker to look forward to in the last leg race, number seven. And that is the eight that will be in the conclusive race. Number eight being a Gilda Gray. I think we'll touch on that in a little while in more detail. We're off with the race number four, and that will be an off time to race four of 14 at 10. Race number four at a Turbidine on the inside track. Okay, so race uh, number five will uh, be a last chance to get involved in a jackpot. We're going over the 1,600 metres. This is a take-better winner number, number merit rated 74. 
And as far as the scratchings, no scratchings, just a form update and a pertinent one from last Saturday. Now we saw My Lady Soul come through to win for Tyra and Zaki. The stable seems in good heart. At a big odds of 25 to 1 on Saturday over the uh, today's uh, distance on the stand side track. Finished third, a length and a quarter to a Presley and was in a presence right up uh, to the finish. So the birth here, it is the third, a length and a quarter behind a Presley worth uh, taking that form line update on the board. Warhawk Bomber, I'm still, the jury's still out on Warhawk Bomber, Mr. Burrows. So your uh, thoughts on Warhawk Bomber and uh, the uh, chances on uh, Thursday? Um, Cesar, I think he's a massive runner, you know. Uh, he was closing the gap fast last time out, and I think the, the little bit extra distance he goes could suit him down to the ground. He's got an apprentice allowance, 56 and a half kilos. Must be right there. Uh, Labeccio, I mean... I thought he ran above his rating in his last two starts behind Presley last time out. That was a cracking effort. It was a very competitive race. And he's only got, what is it, 52? I'm not sure if the apprentice takes off four kilos. But if that's the case, 48 kilos, he's got to be a serious runner. Um, Willow Express, uh, very disappointing. Um, he does love the inside track. Most of his victories have been here. So he's got to come into the play. Okay, so we're going to have a look at uh, the uh, jackpot suggestion from Mr. Marie just after we've had his thoughts as uh, to a uh, Warhawk bomber. And uh, the bet here in that run on a Saturday was just a very, very good. And you actually thought maybe the upset, but he didn't have many upsets on Saturday. Could come through in the form of Lebethio, but uh, Presley hung on nicely. And uh, just running in front of Lebethio was, I think, Lamuhal, who's run into second and maybe needs more ground now. Yeah, Cecil, um, maybe it's... Uh too soon for him. I don't know if he's going to line up. I actually excluded him, but um, looking deeper into it, I should have included him. Uh, he's got You're no weight. To change. <laughs> he's got no <laughs> weight to shoulder. Um, I like the look of Sage King here. Um, last time I was from a wide draw, he was never in contention. Um, part to that, not disgraced. They're, they're in thereabouts, but Cecil, I think he's better on a firmer track. He's form on a soft Track isn't that good. Uh, Trent takes off uh, four kgs and he loves the inside track, so I think he could be there. But Olocene's also another one that's gone into my play. Have a look at his rating, it's really plummeted. Um, his last couple of starts from an 83 to a 77, well drawn, four kgs off his black, uh, back. He's gone into my play. Respect for Warhawk Bomber, certainly improved as a gelding. A uh, tricky event, small but competitive. So Willow Express, I got burnt many a time. <laughs> I thought after that uh, Vixa Princess 4 run, I thought uh, we would actually have a uh, forward uh, uh, performance the last time out behind a Slinky Mapimpi, but not to be. I had confidence all around, but uh, maybe one more chance uh, for me. Let's have a look at uh, what Daryl has included in that uh, first leg. What well, he's gone with Willow Express, he's also gone with uh, Warhawk Bomber, the six of Sage King, and the seven Holocene, as you heard, the man does suggest that if he had a second chance, he would include uh, the uh, eight of the Tyron Zaki runner, Libetio. So that is the uh, jackpot getting underway. Race five at 14 or 45 the last of two jackpots on the afternoon race six is uh, for uh, racing 244 racing for you made in uh, stakes and it's over the 2000 meters now we've got a stable that is uh, well renowned uh, for being Deadly when it comes uh, to their home track, and that is Turpentine. That's off uh, Tony Peter. He's uh, proved equally effective as a ball, as we saw, with what was the winner on the afternoon, Almond C. However, we've got a street art now in the last few outings, has been giving chunks of weight to opposition, hasn't been disgraced, and uh, set this uh, Thursday won't be uh, too much different. His uh, next the best is the uh, horse that's going to be carrying the 56 on its back, and that is a flashy Apache. Darren? 1212 Quat uh, seems uh, to be also one uh, that is uh, finding that uh, number one box elusive. Do you give it a winning chance on Thursday? Uh, definitely. I thought um, 1212 Cut and Viva Brazil. Now, there's nothing separating them on that last start when Viva Brazil beat him. And Viva Brazil's got a lovely turn of foot. I really like that acceleration he shows. He's a three year old, lightly raced. I just see him improving more than 1212 Cut can. So I'm going to lean towards the bottom weight, Viva Brazil, over Tua Tua Cut. 
And then the two Peter runners, street art, giving them a lot of weight, but he's capable and say, yes, she bounced back to best last time out. Okay, so now, uh, Mr. Marie, as far as the Trotwell cuts, I do recall uh, Mike de Kock bemoaning the uh, penalty it got for running second. And uh, to quote his words, he thought that that uh, was depriving the, win the owner of uh, yet another winner on uh, Thursday. Can that be put to right? Yeah, so, so I actually give him a strong winning chance. You know, Muzi's riding extremely well for the syndicate. Um, he has a horse that's super fit and he's in form. So small field, draw shouldn't be of any concern. I'll give him a, a winning chance. Then you got Striker riding for his mate, uh, Jade de Mata. Um, this horse was uh, shown air, I think about 700 from home last time. I moved up, looked like he was actually going to win. Um, he's not well treated at the weights of here, but I think the inside track uh, will certainly suit him because he can turn it on. Um, if you have a look at the weight structure of here, the Philly, Sayuri, Yes, and the Mayor, Terror Time, come up trumps. They best weighted. Now, Say Yes, uh, last time I'd say, so have a look. She gave the winner eight kilograms. Even when she ran second to poor little rich girl, she gave her eight kilograms. Uh, yeah, she's in a contest where she's well weighted and she has to be respected. She did, she goes well on the inside track of here. So small, once again, small but competitive. I'm not willing to stick my neck out. I think all of numbers one, three, four and six have strong winning claims. Okay, and uh, you are brassing uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Rod Beckers' uh, value bet for the day. Terror time for this one, huh? I am. <laughs> okay. So, right, let's have a look at uh, the uh, selection from Daryl. He's uh, suggested a double for us. And he's gone one, three, four, six, one, three, four, and uh, six in that first leg. And then bank of the one that is a pretty in pearls in a race number seven. And I think if we looked at his uh, exotics earlier on, he does like a lot of uh, pretty in pearls. That is race number six as uh, we head into that uh, last chance to get a ball in a double. Race number seven. Okay, so we're getting to race number seven, and uh, this is a trappy, if uh, that word ever was uh, to apply on a card, and uh, in this case, race seven is just that. And also, it is a staying race for fillies and mares, a lowly handicap at 72, and uh, the difference in opinion will just underline that. Let's first of all get the opinion from within studio, and it is a Daryl Marie. He spanked a Gilda Gray earlier on in all his exotics, and uh, let's just get into... Uh, a bit more as uh, to the reasoning behind that bankery. Um, our bank at Pretty Impulse, not Gilda Gray. Um, Darren Burroughs yes, suggested. Yes, I said Pretty Impulse. Did I say Gilda, Gilda Gray? Gray? Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Pretty um, Impulse. Yeah, so <laughs> the two of us are um, going to be uh, shouting against each other over here, unfortunately, uh, Cecil, but um, that's the nature of the game. Yes. Yeah, Pretty Impulse. You can see prior to her later start, she was very consistent and knocking at the door loudly for her next victory. Um, last time out, I watched the race and it just went pear shaped for her. Unfortunately, she was at the back of the field and caught out of her ground on the inside track, Cecil. She stayed on nicely, but I'm expecting Phyllis Sunday to make use of her this time around and get her into the race. So I think uh, she's going to set the record straight and uh, put in a much better performance. She does hold a few on the Rosie Lemon run. Um, yeah, so it is a very, very competitive Phillies and Mares handicap. I'm not sitting here and saying she's worth a bet. All I'm saying is uh, she will run a much improved race and uh, be right there at the finish. Yes, so, so uh, Rosie Lemon is certainly proving to be a very gamer performer indeed. And uh, just going to Darren, before we touch on uh, the uh, merits or demerits of uh, Gilda Gray and uh, Pretty and Pearl respectively, he has a, one with a training background. Now, last time I had a Sean I put the cheek pieces on Midnight Crystal and they seem to work the trick. They work the oracle. And now I see, the blinkers on last time out, but I see he's resorted back to the uh, cheek pieces. What would the reasoning be there? Um, I think um, she only ran just the other day. I'm not sure if the, the card was out or should I say the equipment was out already. Um, by that time, uh, you might see an equipment change on race day, but uh, I'm not too sure about that because he did improve with the blinkers back on. But I thought Gilda Gray, now I went back five runs on the inside track over 1,800 meters. 
and she got beat by Quiet Rebellion in a stronger race, uh, beaten under a length, and she was staying on nicely. Since then, she had a four-month layoff. She's had three comeback runs, and I just feel she's going to reach peak fitness. So with only 54 and a half, uh, it's a pity that Samanga Kamala is not riding because he's ridden her seven times for three wins and two places. So that would have been ideal, but I've only seen that that change um, after putting my selection up. But I'm still going to lean towards her. Okay, so perhaps uh, those two horses uh, could possibly do the trick for us. That is one Pretty and Pearls and uh, the eight uh, Gilda Grey. But it is your selection, Darren, that we're going with. And uh, easy to back at seven to one, especially from an each-way perspective. That is uh, the Farney Broncos owned and uh, trained uh, three-time winner from 48 outings, a five-year-old daughter of uh, Bezrin. That is uh, race number seven. And just to confirm, as we round off race seven, just about uh, 45 minutes ago, there was that declaration come through that uh, Midnight Crystal, yes indeed, will race with the blinkers on, the cheek pieces remain to be removed. So thanks so much, kudos to you Darren and uh, kudos uh, to you Mr. Marie for pointing out the recent uh, updated change. That is race number seven, for last chance to get involved in a double at Turfidine on Thursday.